Hi, my name is Pete Morissuti. I'm a regional paramedic educator for the Southwest Ontario Regional Base Hospital Program. Today, I'm going to present a pre-course review and an adult cardiac arrest for PCPs. Upon completion of this webinar, the paramedic will be able to review the treatment of cardiac arrest rhythms in the adult patient. Facts. Sudden cardiac arrest is often a treatable condition that does not have to lead to sudden death. Diseases of the circulatory system and cancers are the leading cause of death in Canada. The following shows the mortality from leading causes of circular diseases and cancers in Canada from 2000, 2004, and 2009. Sudden cardiac arrest. Nothing gets the heart pumping, the sweat dripping, and the brain thinking more furiously than a medical cardiac arrest for paramedics. Most adult cardiac arrest victims die from underlying cardiac disease as shown in the previous slide. However, medical cardiac arrest can occur for a variety of other reasons. There may be no warning. No matter the cause of the arrest, this is the one of the most stressful events for paramedics. Management of cardiac arrest requires you to deploy a great many skills that you've learned to do in urgent circumstances in which minutes count. It is very difficult to think clearly in these stressful circumstances, and hence this area of expertise holds the highest error rate for paramedics. It is essential that you follow an orderly, systematic approach to delivering the care required to a patient in cardiac arrest. You must bring calm to the chaos. The process or approach needs to be rehearsed repeatedly and the team must be ready to react. Techniques and sequences should be very familiar to all levels of paramedics, from students to seasoned veterans. All sudden cardiac arrest management begins in the BLS style and progresses as needed. The following will serve as a review for ensuring maximal effective CPR to adults in cardiac arrest. Concentrate on high quality compressions with minimum interruptions. Ensure compressions are deep enough, fast enough. Avoid bouncy or jerky compressions. Keep your shoulders directly over the patient's sternum and elbows straight. Allow for full chest recoil and change the compressor every two minutes to ensure that fatigue does not affect the quality of compressions. Avoid excessive inflation pressure in artificial ventilation. Inflate just enough to visualize the chest rise. Once an advanced airway is in place, continue with uninterrupted CPR with eight to 10 ventilations per minute given with 100% supplemental oxygen. Do not interrupt chest compressions except for advanced airway placement, defibrillation, or the moving of the patient. Minimize the duration of the interruption to as close to 10 seconds as possible. Any stop in compression also stops perfusion, and this is what it's all about. Cardiac arrest. How do we manage it? The approach to every patient in cardiac arrest will all start with the same steps. Ensure you bring all your equipment. Once you reach the patient, assess the responsiveness. If the patient is unresponsive and has no pulse after a 10 second check, start CPR 30 to 2, or if any study as per the guidelines. The second paramedic immediately attaches the monitor defibrillator and begins an analysis. Remember that there is no more two minutes of upfront CPR. Check the rhythm on the monitor. At this point in time, you want to answer the question, are they in a shockable rhythm? If VF or VT is present, follow the algorithm for VF or VT. If VF or VT is not present, follow the algorithm for PEA or asystole. Resume CPR. Each of these situations requires a different course of specific treatment. 
Rescue breathing and ventilations are de-emphasized and chest compressions need to be resumed immediately. Positioning of the head and achieving a seal with the bag valve mask takes time. Chest compressions are the priority. Rescue breathing no longer needs to be synchronized to chest compressions. Treatment of VF or pulseless VT. The management of VF or pulseless VT algorithm is likely the most important algorithm. Patients in VF or VT are most likely to be successfully resuscitated if they receive timely and appropriate treatment. Initiate resuscitation based on VLS algorithm. Perform CPR while defibrillator is being attached. Confirm shockable rhythm via analysis. Resume CPR while the unit is charging. Clear the patient and then defibrillate. Once a shock is delivered, resume CPR. Checking for a pulse at this time is not recommended. Recent research shows that even if an organized rhythm appears in the post-resuscitation period, the presence of a pulse is unlikely. Two minutes of post-resuscitation CPR is unlikely to cause the return of VF or VT. Only stop CPR if there is obvious signs of life. After two minutes of CPR, stop and assess the patient's circulation and check the rhythm. If a rhythm other than VF or VT appears, identify the new rhythm. If there is no pulse, move to the PEA assistedly pathway and initiate CPR. If there is a pulse, treat accordingly. If the VF or VT is persistent, resume CPR and charging of the defibrillator. Clear the patient and then defibrillate. Resume CPR and continue for two minutes. Compressor should be changed out at this point to avoid fatigue and ineffective CPR. The airway is being managed effectively with an OPA and BVM, continue on. If there is an inadequate ventilation, proceed to the advanced airway. Once four analyses are complete, and the patient has received electrical therapy, the patient will now be transported to the closest emergency room. If at any point there is a return of spontaneous circulation, ROSC, assess the patient's vital signs, support the airway in breathing, elevate the head 30 degrees, and provide a 10 mL per kilo bolus of normal saline for the PCPs who are IV certified. Treatment of PEA and asystole. This slide represents some of the reversible causes for PEA. This is a continuation of the table of reversible causes for PEA. The term pulseless electrical activity refers to an organized cardiac rhythm other than VT on the monitor that has no detectable pulse associated. The previous tables refer to the causes of PEA and possible treatment that may reverse it. Providing the appropriate treatment depends on identifying the specific cause. The treatment of PEA assistedly is like any other managed cardiac arrest in the initial procedures. Immediately assess the patient for responsiveness. A 10 second pulse check is included. No pulse, start CPR. Attach a monitor defibrillator and check the rhythm by analyzing. Insert an advanced airway if the BLS airway is inadequate. Search for the reversible causes. It is not recommended to check a blood glucose in a VSA patient do the ability of obtaining a false reading. If you are unable to identify and treat the underlying cause, patient survival is unlikely. At the end of two minutes of CPR, 
interpret the rhythm on the monitor. If the patient is still in a PEA or a systole, no shock indicated, check for a pulse. If none is present, continue CPR. If the patient meets all the criteria, consider termination of resuscitation after the third analysis by contacting the BHP. When to stop CPR? It is often easier to leave the scene with lights flashing and sirens wailing, unfortunately providing false hope to the family that a miracle will occur. Cardiac arrest patients who were not successfully resuscitated at the scene were invariably transported urgently to the hospital with some semblance of CPR occurring. In Canada, it soon became evident that transport to the emergency room of adults who do not respond to pre-hospital ACLS was an exercise in futility. Fewer than 1% survived. Furthermore, rapid transport of patients in cardiac arrest with CPR en route involves considerable hazards to the paramedics and to the public. The risk of MVCs or injuries while working in a moving ambulance are greatly increased during the transport. Many EMS systems in Canada allow paramedics to contact the BHP and cease resuscitative efforts. Only a physician is authorized to declare a person dead. Paramedics may contact the BHP to obtain a medical tour. The termination of resuscitation tour occurs after the third analysis for patients that meet the criteria. Patients must be greater than 18 years old and must be in a PEA or a systolic rhythm. If a patient received a shock, was a witness to arrest by paramedics, or achieved a ROSC, they do not qualify for the tour. Achieving permission to stop CPR in the pre-hospital setting will not make your life easier. Delicate issues are now involved, such as expectation of the patient's family, breaking the bad news, and the disposition of the body. Stopping CPR may be difficult for you. You'll find yourself in the unaccustomed role of having to tell the father, mother, brother, sister, etc. that their loved one is dead. There's nothing more that can be done for this patient. Remember, your safety is paramount. Thank you for taking part in this webinar review. If there are any further questions or concerns, please feel free to contact us at www.lhsc.on.ca forward slash BHP and our contact information is located under the Education Department. Thank you and have a good day.